going to dive deep into five habits that completely transformed my life in just one week. Yes, you heard that right. One week. I know it sounds almost too good to be true, but I promise you these aren't just your run-of-the-mill tips that you hear everywhere. These are real, raw, and honest habits that I personally integrated into my daily routine. I went through the struggles, the breakthroughs, and the triumphs, and the transformation I experienced was nothing short of amazing. I can't wait to share these with you because they have had such a profound impact on my life, and I believe they can do the same for you. Whether you're looking to boost your productivity, improve your mental health, or just make a positive change in your everyday life, these habits can help you get there. So grab a cup of coffee, get comfortable, and let's dive right in. Trust me, you'll want to stick around until the end, because these habits aren't just theoretical. They are practical, actionable steps that you can start implementing today. Plus, I'll be sharing some personal stories and insights from my own journey, giving you a raw and honest look at how these habits worked for me. So, without further ado, let's get started. Habit 1. Waking up early. The first habit that changed my life was waking up early. Now let me be completely honest with you, I was never a morning person. My bed was my best friend, and I used to hit the snooze button more times than I can count. Mornings were a chaotic rush, and I often felt like I was starting my day on the wrong foot. But I decided to give waking up early a shot, and let me tell you, it was a game changer. I started by setting my alarm for 5 a.m. The first few days were brutal. I remember dragging myself out of bed, feeling groggy and wondering if this was really worth it. But I pushed through, and by the third day, something incredible started to happen. I began to appreciate the quiet and stillness of the early morning hours. There was something almost magical about being up before the rest of the world when everything was calm and peaceful. With these extra hours in the morning, I found time for things I never seemed to have time for before. I started my day with a bit of light exercise, nothing too intense, just some stretching or a short jog around the neighborhood. This not only woke me up, but also energized me for the rest of the day. I also spent some time meditating and setting my intentions for the day. These few moments of mindfulness made a huge difference in my overall mindset and productivity. Another surprising benefit of waking up early was that I no longer felt rushed. I had ample time to enjoy a healthy breakfast, sip my coffee slowly, and plan out my day. This unrushed start set a positive tone for the entire day. I was more organized, less stressed, and felt a greater sense of control over my time. One personal experience that stands out was the morning I watched the sunrise from my balcony. It was a simple yet profoundly beautiful moment. As the sky changed colors and the world slowly woke up, I felt a deep sense of gratitude and peace. It was in that moment that I truly understood the power of waking up early. Now waking up early might not be for everyone, but I encourage you to give it a try, even if it's just for a week. Start with just 15 minutes earlier than your usual wake up time and gradually increase it. You might be surprised at how much of a positive impact it can have on your life. It's not just about having more hours in the day, but about using those hours to create a more mindful, intentional, and fulfilling start to your day. Habit 2 Daily Exercise Speaking of workouts, daily exercise was habit number two that truly transformed my life. Now let me be upfront, I wasn't always the most active person. I used to find every excuse in the book to avoid working out. I'm too tired. I don't have time. Or, I'll start tomorrow sound familiar? But one day I decided enough was enough. I made a commitment to move my body every single day for a week, and the results were incredible. I started small, just 20 minutes a day, mixing it up between yoga, jogging, and strength training. I wanted to keep it interesting so I wouldn't get bored and quit halfway through. The first few days were tough. My muscles were sore and I felt exhausted, but I reminded myself why I was doing this, to feel better both physically and mentally. By the fourth day, something amazing happened. I woke up feeling more energized. My mood had improved drastically 
I was less irritable and more positive. I realized that those 20 minutes of exercise were not just about burning calories or building muscle. They were about giving myself time to focus on me, to release stress, and to boost my endorphins. One morning, I remember lacing up my sneakers for a jog. It was a crisp, clear day. And as I ran, I felt a sense of freedom and clarity that I hadn't experienced in a long time. It was just me, the open road, and my thoughts. That sense of connection to myself and the world around me was truly empowering. I also started to see physical changes. My posture improved, I felt stronger, and I noticed a difference in my overall fitness. But the biggest change was in my mindset. Exercise became my time to disconnect from the world and reconnect with myself. It became a form of self-care rather than a chore. Another personal highlight was trying yoga for the first time. I was hesitant at first, thinking I wasn't flexible enough or that it wouldn't be a real workout. But after a few sessions, I fell in love with it. Yoga taught me to be present, to breathe deeply, and to listen to my body. It was a transformative experience that went beyond the physical benefits. Incorporating daily exercise into my routine made me realize that taking care of my body directly impacted my mental health and overall happiness. It's not about being perfect or pushing yourself to extremes. It's about finding a form of movement that you enjoy and making it a regular part of your life. So if you're like I was and struggling to get started, my advice is to start small. Find something you enjoy, whether it's dancing, hiking, or even just a brisk walk. Commit to just a few minutes a day and gradually build up from there. Trust me, the benefits you'll experience will be well worth the effort. It's a habit that has the power to change not just your body, but your entire outlook on life. Habit three, journaling. Habit number three is journaling. Now I used to think journaling was just for people who had loads of free time or were naturally introspective. I was skeptical. I mean, who has time to sit down and write about their day when there's so much going on? But one week of consistent journaling completely shifted my perspective and it became a cornerstone of my personal growth journey. I started simple. Every night before bed, I dedicated just 10 minutes to journaling. I bought a plain notebook and a pen that felt comfortable in my hand. No fancy apps, no pressure to make it look pretty. Just me and my thoughts. The first night I stared at the blank page, unsure of what to write. But then I began with something basic. How my day went, what made me happy, and what I struggled with. As the days went by, I started to dive deeper. I wrote about my goals, my fears, my dreams, and even my insecurities. It was like having a conversation with myself, and that's when the magic happened. I began to notice patterns in my thoughts and behaviors. I realized that some of the things I worried about were completely out of my control, while others were areas where I could take actionable steps. One night, I remember writing about a particularly stressful day at work. By putting my thoughts on paper, I was able to process my emotions better. I wrote about what specifically stressed me out, how it made me feel, and what I could do differently next time. This simple act of reflection helped me gain clarity and feel more in control of my emotions. Another powerful aspect of journaling was tracking my progress. I noted down small victories and milestones no matter how minor they seemed. Looking back at these entries filled me with a sense of accomplishment and motivated me to keep pushing forward. For instance, I wrote about a presentation I was nervous about and how I prepared for it. Seeing my preparation process and the positive outcome documented in my journal was incredibly encouraging. I also started a gratitude section in my journal. Every day, I wrote down three things I was grateful for. This practice shifted my focus from what was lacking in my life to appreciating what I already had. It was a simple yet profound shift that brought more positivity into my daily life. One particularly memorable entry was about a random act of kindness I experienced. A stranger helped me when I was struggling with my grocery bags. Writing about this act of kindness not only made me feel grateful, but also inspired me to pay it forward. Through journaling, 
I discovered a lot about myself, my desires, my fears, my strengths, and my weaknesses. It became a form of therapy, a way to untangle the complex web of thoughts and emotions that we all carry around. It provided a safe space where I could be completely honest with myself without fear of judgment. If you've never tried journaling, I highly encourage you to start. Don't worry about writing perfectly or having profound thoughts. Just write whatever comes to mind. It could be a stream of consciousness, a recap of your day, or reflections on a specific event. Give yourself the freedom to express whatever you're feeling. You might be surprised at how much clarity and peace it brings into your life. Habit four, mindful eating. Next up, mindful eating. This was a big one for me because, like many people, I used to eat on the go, barely paying attention to what or how much I was consuming. My meals were often rushed and distracted affairs, eaten while scrolling through my phone or working on my laptop. I didn't realize how much this was affecting my overall well-being until I decided to give mindful eating a try for one week. Mindful eating is all about paying full attention to the experience of eating and drinking, both inside and outside the body. It's about savoring each bite, noticing the flavors, textures, and even the sounds of your food. So, I made a commitment to eat all my meals mindfully. I started by setting the scene for my meals. I cleared my dining table, set a nice place for myself, and removed any distractions. No phone, no TV, no laptop. It felt a bit strange at first to sit quietly with my meal, but it quickly became a calming ritual. I began each meal with a few deep breaths to center myself and bring my focus to the present moment. One of the first things I noticed was how much more I enjoyed my food. I took the time to really taste and appreciate each bite. Foods I had eaten hundreds of times before suddenly had new, delightful flavors and textures that I had never really noticed. For example, the crunch of fresh vegetables and the sweetness of ripe fruit became much more pronounced. It was like experiencing food in high definition. Another major change was how much more satisfied I felt after meals. By eating slowly and mindfully, I gave my body time to signal when it was full. This was a big shift for me as I used to eat quickly and often ended up overeating. By paying attention to my hunger and fullness cues, I found that I naturally ate less and felt more satisfied. One memorable experience was with a simple bowl of oatmeal. Normally, I would wolf it down without a second thought, but this time I took it slow, savoring the creamy texture and the subtle sweetness of the honey I drizzled on top. It became a moment of gratitude and mindfulness that set a positive tone for the rest of my day. I also started to notice how different foods made me feel. Heavy, processed foods left me feeling sluggish and bloated, while fresh, whole foods made me feel energized and light. This awareness led me to make healthier choices naturally, without feeling deprived or restricted. Another aspect of mindful eating is being aware of the emotional connections we have with food. I started to recognize when I was eating out of boredom, stress, or emotional comfort, rather than true hunger. This awareness was powerful. Instead of mindlessly snacking, I could address the underlying emotion. Maybe I needed a break, some relaxation, or a chat with a friend rather than a bag of chips. There was one particular evening when I had a craving for something sweet after dinner. Instead of automatically reaching for dessert, I paused and asked myself if I was truly hungry or just seeking a reward after a long day. I realized I wasn't actually hungry and opted for a warm cup of herbal tea instead. It was a small victory that highlighted how powerful mindful eating can be. Incorporating mindful eating into my life was a transformative experience. It helped me develop a healthier relationship with food, improve my digestion, and even enhanced my overall sense of well-being. It's a habit that I've continued beyond that initial week, and I can't recommend it enough. If you're interested in trying mindful eating, start with just one meal a day. Sit down without distractions, take a few deep breaths, and savor each bite. Pay attention to the flavors, textures, and how the food makes you feel. You might be surprised at how this simple practice can change your entire eating experience. 
It's a wonderful way to reconnect with your body and truly appreciate the nourishment that food provides. Habit five, limiting screen time. Habit number five is limiting screen time. This one was particularly challenging for me, and I suspect it might be for many of you as well. We live in a digital world, and it's so easy to get sucked into endless hours of scrolling through social media, binge watching shows or checking emails. But I realized that all this screen time was taking a toll on my mental health, my productivity, and even my sleep. So I decided to set some boundaries and see what happened. First, I set a daily limit of one hour for non-work-related screen time. This meant no mindless scrolling through Instagram, no endless YouTube marathons, and no late-night TV binges. It was tough at first. I had become so accustomed to filling every spare moment with screen time, but I knew I needed to make a change. The first thing I noticed was how much more time I had in my day. I didn't realize how much of my time was being eaten up by screens until I consciously limited it. With those extra hours, I found myself rediscovering old hobbies and interests that I had neglected. I picked up a book I had been meaning to read, started doodling and drawing again, and even tried my hand at cooking new recipes. One evening, instead of watching TV after dinner, I decided to take a walk in the park. The fresh air, the sounds of nature, and the simple act of moving my body felt incredibly rejuvenating. It was a stark contrast to the usual screen-induced lethargy I felt. That walk became a cherished part of my daily routine, something I looked forward to and enjoyed immensely. Another significant change was in my sleep quality. I used to take my phone to bed, scrolling through social media or watching videos until I felt sleepy. But this habit often left me feeling wired and restless, leading to poor sleep. By limiting screen time, especially before bed, I found it much easier to wind down and fall asleep. I started a bedtime routine that didn't involve screens, reading a physical book, meditating, or simply reflecting on my day. This change led to deeper, more restful sleep and made a huge difference in my overall energy levels. I also noticed improvements in my mental health. Without the constant barrage of news updates, social media comparisons, and digital distractions, I felt less anxious and more present. I was more focused during conversations, more attentive to the people around me, and more engaged in my daily activities. It was like a fog had lifted, allowing me to see and experience life more clearly. One particularly memorable day was when I spent an entire afternoon at a local cafe with just a notebook and a pen. I wrote down my thoughts, planned some goals, and even sketched a bit. It was such a peaceful and productive time, free from digital interruptions. I felt more connected to myself and my surroundings in a way that screens had never allowed. Of course, there were moments of temptation and slips along the way. But each time I noticed myself reaching for my phone out of habit, I gently reminded myself of the benefits I was experiencing and redirected my focus to something more fulfilling. Limiting screen time is not about completely eliminating technology from your life. It's about creating a healthier balance and being more intentional with your time. If you're feeling overwhelmed or disconnected, I encourage you to try setting some screen time boundaries. Start small, maybe with an hour less each day and gradually increase it. Use that extra time to reconnect with yourself, your loved ones, and the world around you. You might be surprised at how much richer and more fulfilling life can be when you step away from the screens and engage more with the real world. All right, everyone. That wraps up our journey through the five habits that dramatically changed my life in just one week. It's been an incredible experience, not just implementing these habits, but also sharing them with you. Each of these habits has the power to create significant positive changes in your life. And I truly believe that if they could work for me, they can work for anyone. If you've been inspired by any of these habits, I encourage you to try them out for yourself. Start small, maybe with one habit, and see how it feels. Adjust according to what suits your lifestyle and needs. Remember, the goal isn't perfection, it's progress. It's about making small, manageable changes that accumulate into substantial transformations over time. 
I'd love to hear about your experiences, so please drop a comment below sharing which habit you're thinking of adopting or any questions you might have about starting. Your feedback and stories are what make this community so amazing and supportive. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you won't miss any of our future content. We have lots more insights and tips coming your way that you won't want to miss. Sharing this video with friends or family who might benefit from these habits could also make a huge difference in their lives. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, small changes lead to big results. Let's keep growing, keep evolving, and turn our everyday routines into powerful moments of self-improvement. See you in the next video. Stay awesome, everyone.